Okay, welcome to the review for exam one of physics 210. Uh, so uh, I will be doing some of this recording because I'm partially out of town. Well, actually I am out of town. Uh, and so we're gonna basically do some of the same stuff we do in lecture and a little bit extra, right? So let's talk about that, right? So the first thing we're gonna do, I have these listed here uh, in lecture, we're gonna review sheet number one, review sheet number 10, and review sheet number 22. But in here, we're also going to do review sheet number 12, right? So let's, let's start. Okay, so review sheet number one is pretty freaking simple, right? So I'm going to let you guys go through that one by yourself, right? Uh, review sheet, sheet, sheet number 10 is something that we need to do as well, right? These are the notes I have for my, um, uh, for my uh, substitute, right? Okay, so I'm going to do re uh, number 10A, all right? So but I'm going to include a little bit broader. So a uniformly charged south sphere radius R has volume charge density of rho. Show the distance R from the center of the electric field is this. Okay, so this is true for little r less than big R, okay? And we're just going to do two cases, basically the case of little r less than big R and the little case of r big, little r bigger than uh, big R, right? So let's go ahead and do that, all right? So let's go ahead and do this. This is um, review sheet number 10A, extended. Okay. Uh, and this is basically problem set number two, uh, problem five. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So uh, we're starting with a solid sphere. Here's my solid sphere here. Okay. And rather than telling you this is some charge Q, Right, I'm going to tell you that in fact, this thing has a charge density in here of rho. Okay, all right, so that's the charge density there. Right, and so what I want to do is I want to basically find the electric field. So I'm going to find the E field. Right, and in the problem set, it was only for the case of R less than or equal to capital R, but, but we also do extend it. We're going to do R bigger than R, okay? So let's do both of them, right? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're basically going to uh, consider uh, how to solve this problem. And the one thing you got to remember is this is a round thing. And whenever you have round things, all right, uniformly round things, you want to use Gauss's Law. So we're going to use Gauss's Law. Okay? And what does Gauss's law say? Gauss's law says, fine, the integral of uh, phi, which is the electric flux, is equal to the integral of the electric field dotted with the area, right, is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught, right? In the solutions that had Q inside, it's the same thing, right? Q enclosed, Q inside, the same thing, all right? Okay, so that's fine, let's do that, all right. Uh, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually start by drawing uh, the Gaussian surface, right? So we're gonna basically look at the case for R less than R, less than equal R, which is the problem that's basically presented in the, um, in the, in the homework, all right? So let's consider this thing, we're gonna have a R less than R, there is my Gaussian surface there, okay? And this has a radius R, say. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So Gaussian, Gauss's law relies on the fact that this part has to be easy and this part could be hard. I'll put a hard one question mark there, right? Because it's not always hard. Okay, all right, in this case, it is actually slightly hard, right? So we gotta be careful. So this is easy and this hard. So what does that mean? So that means that you have to make the same arguments that we make over and over in class again, right? That's it's round, so you could spin this ring around, and because you spin it around, you can't have any basically vectors that are parallel to the surface because it always basically rotate them to some other direction. So all electric fields are radial. And this area now, because it's a spherical surface, though that area is also along the radial direction as well. Right? So the long story short, this reduces to E times the area of the sphere. I'll put a sphere here, just in case is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. All right, so let's go ahead. So that's my Gaussian surface. So it's gonna be E times four pi R squared. Now this side is always gonna be the same, right? 
this is true for r less than r this will also be true for r greater than r as well right, so this is actually very easy when it's easy it's truly easy is equal to this part you got to do some thinking okay what's q and close now normally i tell you that this entire thing is a charge q i didn't this time i just told you what the charge density rho is okay so what is q and close so that's basically going to be q and closed over epsilon now and what's q and close well that's just the density times the volume right here over epsilon naught and in this case, this is basically rho times 4 thirds pi r, little r q y. It's the volume in here. That's what we care about right now. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and do this now. All right. So now E is equal to divide by 4 pi r squared. This is 4 pi r cubed. Guess what you have basically? Oh, don't forget epsilon. Rho over 3 epsilon naught, right? The four pi's kill each other. R squared kills a one factor of R, R. Okay, there, you're done. So this part is done. Now let's do this part, okay? Normally I always say do this part first, right? Because most of the time I give you, that's actually much easier. In this case, it's about the same, right? So let's do the same thing again. R greater than R, it's the same thing. The E, times the area of the sphere again, right? Because the same stupid argument goes over again, it's round, you spin this thing around, blah, blah, blah. The e feels out to be radio, right? It's equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught, right? So let's get the rest of it. So it's E again, four pi R squared. I told you this wouldn't change, right? It's equal to, now let's get the rest. Now this piece is interesting, right? So let's remember what the Gaussian surface looks like. It's now R is bigger than R, so somewhere out here. So this is R here. Okay? And we asked it to charge and close. Well, the charge and close is just this piece now. Okay? It's just the up to capital R. So this is basically rho times the volume over epsilon naught, which is rho over epsilon naught times the volume, which in this case is 4 pi over 3 capital R Q. Alright? The four pi's kill each other. Now this little R squared will not kill off this big R Q. Alright? So we have E is equal to rho over 3 epsilon. That stays the same. There's going to be R cubed up here and then divide by R squared. And that is it. Okay? This is the electric field on the outside now. Alright. So that's number one, okay? Now, the other one that I want to try to do, right? Let me make sure this is gonna be okay. I pause it quite a bit. The other one that I want to do, right? And this is not in the review, in lecture, but it's actually here, uh, will be number 12, right? So I have a positive charge Q located at uh, X and minus. How much work do you need to bring a second charge plus Q from infinity to X equals A, right? Now, with these two charges, how much work do you need to bring a charge minus Q infinity to X equals zero? We'll basically do that problem right there, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do that, right? Uh, so, let's go ahead and do that, okay? So this is, um, make sure I have to see it correctly. This is our review sheet number. 12, right? And this is part A, right? So I'm going to bring, I have two charges, minus plus Q at minus A, and then another two charge right here, plus Q at plus A, right? And I'm going to basically imagine um, uh, me bringing in a charge basically from infinity to this point, right? So I'll bring some charge, I believe what I do is I put minus Q here, bring this in, and just dump it right there at X equals zero, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do that, all right? So the first thing um, that I need to do is as follows.
Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I just need to figure out what the work is. So what's the work? The work is just equal to the charge times V. And in this case, this charge is going to be this minus Q there. And this V is going to be the potential from the plus Q charges, all right? That's kind of confusing. I'll call it charge one, charge two, charge three. So this is basically charge one and two. Okay, and this is basically charge three. All right, so that's much clearer. Let's do that now. So now let's write down what the potential is going to be. Let's get this right. Okay, so I'm at, interested in the potential at this point, right? This is basically potential at x equals zero, right? This is along some axis here. So the potential is just basically the sum of all the potentials, basically, which is sum of basically well, V1 plus V2, right? The potential at this point through the first charge, potential at this point through the second charge. Let's go ahead and do that. This is gonna be equal to, let's get this right. So what is charges for individual potentials? V is equal to K, uh, Q sub I, over basically R of I to P, the point of interest here, right? Point of interest is right here. So let's write that down. Uh, V1 is gonna be K, Q1 is be Q, divided by R I P, right? So this is just this distance here. That's this distance there, right? What's that? That's A, right? Okay. Uh, if you wanna be pedantic about it, right? You could write this as, K, Q over absolute value, because this is distance, right? The position that I care about, which is zero, right? Position which I, I am interested in, starting from is minus A, minus A, minus zero, absolute value of that, okay? Okay, uh, now I add the second one, V2, that's K, Q over, now it's this position P right here, is this distance here, that's also A as well, is a minus zero again okay all right so what is this this is k q over a plus k q over a is two k q over a ah there's a mistake in the solution set right i'll fix that all right the new solution set will fix that one this one had k q over two a right minor mistake uh but those serious one all right so let's go ahead and do that, right? And now, let's bring in, finish this off. So the work is equal to minus Q times K, Q, 2K cubed over A, right? That's this VV right there. It is basically gonna be minus 2K Q squared over A, all right? So that's very, very nice, okay? Now, um, the second thing I want to do, right, is I'm going to bring this, this charge along here to this point here. This is going to be now 2A, all right? All right? I'm going to ask how much work is required to do this. So I know how much work is at this point. Now I'm going to ask how much work is at this point. So here's the key with work. It doesn't matter that I move along circuit path. I could do any path I want. All that matters is for how I start and how I end, right? So let's do that. So let's just basically x equals zero. Let's do the work at x equals two a. That's easy enough. That's just q times v at x equals two a. All right. So let's just figure this out. It's going to be q times v one plus v two. Right. This again is going to be ultimately minus q. So it doesn't really matter. So let's figure it out. So this distance here is this distance. Right. And this distance here is that distance, all right? So what is that distance? Well, this is a to 2a, that's just distance a. This is 2a to minus a, that's 3a, right? So it can be minus q, k, q over, okay, so v1, this is 3a plus k, q over a, okay? So now we're done. This is four thirds um, KQ over three A. So I'll write it. I'll write it. 
minus q, this sum together is 4 thirds kq over a is minus 4 thirds kq squared over a. So now, I care about the work it took to move those two distances. So it's a change here. So the change in work, right, is going to be, so how I end it minus how I start it, all right? So let's go finish this off now. So what's this one? This is minus 4 thirds kq over a, q squared. How I start it, minus, um, minus 2kq squared over a, right? And now we're officially done. Let's go ahead and do this. This is going to be, let's see, so it's going to be k q squared over a. You see that common thing? This is minus and minus is 2 minus 4 thirds. That's this piece right there. What's that? 2 thirds, right? 2 thirds k q squared over a, right? And that's beautiful in itself. All right, so, um, that's basically two of them, all right? So now, what else did I ask to do? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, we did that. So let's do the last one, right? Which is slightly annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Let's do now, um, let me get this thing up. Uh, review sheet number 22, all right? Let's go ahead and look at that one. This I believe is um, problem set five, I believe, number two. I think, yeah. This is problem set number five, number two. Okay. All right. So let's go look at that one. Uh, it just handed it in, so hopefully it's not so horrible. Okay. Let's go. The circuit below has the same reading on the amperium when both switches open and when both switches are closed. What does this R? Okay, so let's, let's look at the circuit here. That's my ugly circuit. This thing has the same reading, okay, if both switches are open and both switches are closed. So let's draw this circuit first, okay? Let's draw it when the both things are open, all right? So let's go ahead if I can do this. All right, so this bottom part looks the same. Okay, this is a hundred ohms, all right? Now, um, this branch is cut off, so that's not gonna go through here. This branch is cut off as well, so that goes through here. So the electric circuit goes like this way around this one. So that's actually a, a very simple circuit, actually. So let's draw this thing up. That's a 300 ohm resistor. That's my A, come back down, that's another 100 ohm. All right, okay, so let us try to use Kirchhoff's law for this one now. Start out here, okay, adopt the direction. This is my I, I'm gonna go around this way, so go up this way. Going across this is minus 300I, right? So minus IR, going across the amp, this ammeter, we'll actually get the reading right now. Go down along this one, minus 100i. Going across this one, this is 1.5 volts. Plus, going from negative to positive, 1.5. Going across this one in the same direction, minus 100i. Going back to zero point is this equal to, that's Kirchhoff's law, right? Never forget that. Okay, at the end, everything sums to zero, okay? That's very nice, very easy, and stuff like that. So let's just go ahead. Minus 100, minus 100, minus 300. That's minus 500. I plus 1.5 equals zero. So that means that I is equal to, let's see, so put the 500 over I here, divide by 500, what is that? Jeez, 1.5 divided by 500. Is that um, 0 0.003 amps? 
I think that's right. Yep, that's right. Okay. So that's my answer. Okay. So that's my reading right here. I is equal to 0 0.003 amps. Okay, so now we're going to close both switches now. Okay. So let's draw that circuit when you both close both. So the bottom part still looks the same. Still 100 ohms here. Okay. Now I go up this way. Go across that circuit right there. That's 300 ohms. That's still there. There's my ammeter. Ah, but there's another way here. There's a R there going up. Okay. This thing closes up there. And now, here's the tricky part, right? When I close this piece here, I completely bypass this piece, right? Let's go ahead and close that up. Right? Okay. Um, you can choose not to believe me, right? And you can actually draw this circuit in as well, okay? We'll do that there just for shits and giggles, all right? Um, 100 ohms, all right? Let's do that. So now, let's draw the eyes. Now, this one had just one eye. This one has multiple eyes. Let's just do that. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna call this one I1, right? Guess it here. This is I2, I3, okay? Guess back to here again, right? This will be I4, but you recognize that the I1s and I2 and I3 will combine here again. So this is just the effect of I1, but I'll call I4 just for help. You know this I4 will be I1, right? Now I can branch again. This is going to be I5, I6. If you ignore this, you just basically just call this on I4 all the way around and you're done, okay? Okay, and then it comes back here. So let's go ahead and do this, all right? Um, so let's write, let's find all the loops that we're going to do, right? So the loop I'm going to do is I'm going to go a loop this way on the outer part, okay? Coming down this way through I6. A loop on the inner part right there, that's number two. So that's the number first loop, second loop, and then I'll do a third loop here as well, okay? All right? It's Freaking annoying as hell, but that's the way it is, right? So let's start with the first loop down here. So loop one. Start out this point. Go across. So it's minus I3 times 300. Okay, that's super annoying. Going across this thing, coming back down. Going across this one is a plus 1.5. Going across this one is a minus I1 times 100 ohms, right? And going back to this point is zero. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing, we'll go across this one. So going across this way, I'm going to get a against I2, a plus I2 times R, and then a minus I3 times 300. Okay, coming back is equal to zero. I start here. Okay, last one. Let's do this one. This one is, is really crazy. I5, wait, so, so start here, go across, come back this way. It's minus I5 times 100 equals, going back is zero, okay? So the first one is the easiest one to solve. Oh, wait, actually, we got to do a few other things. Um, I1, what comes in is equal to what comes out, I2 plus I3. This point here, what comes in I2 plus I3 is equal to I4, okay? And what comes out there basically is um, I4 is equal to what comes out I5 plus I6, right? So those are three points, right? One, two, three, okay? All right, so let's get this one, all right? So the first thing you notice is that I2 and I3 is equal to I1. It's also I2 is also I4. So what that means is that I1 equals I4. You do that already coming in, so it's not like this is a rocket science here, okay? All right, let's get the rest out. Second thing, this thing right here, I5 times 100 equals zero, that means I5 is equal to zero, which means that this bad boy here, 
really means that I4 is equal to I6, right? Or better yet, I6 equals I4, right? So this statement right here was basically what I what I said earlier. You could just hang, ignore that, right? But this is a more formal way of doing it. Okay, so that's fine. All right, so let's just simplify this a little bit, right? So this I4, which is actually equal to I1. So let's basically convert this. Then. This is I1 here. That's I I1 there as well. well I'll cover that. Not I1, not I1. Okay, so let's limit this crap now. Okay, so now we're almost done. Okay. Now we just need to look at these two, okay? And then we need to get them, right? So let's go ahead and do that, right? So I have minus I3 times 300 plus 1.5 uh, minus I1 uh, times 100 equals zero, right? And then I have the other one, I2 times R minus I3 times 300 equals zero. So here's the key. We know what I3 is. I told you this amp meter read the same thing. It read this, 0 0.3 amps. So that means I3, because I told you that already, is 0 0.003 amps, right? Okay, so you take this, you plug that into there, that's minus 0 0.9 is I2 times R, okay, equals zero. So that's a promising thing right there. Let's figure out the rest of there. So now what I have here is I have, this is I3, so that's minus 0 0.003 times 300, right? Because I3 was that number, plus 1.5 minus I1, uh, I1 times 100 equals zero, okay? So let's get this thing. This thing right here is z minus 0 0.9 plus 1.5 minus I1 times 100 equals zero. Let's go figure out. This is gonna be um, 0 0.6, 0 0.6 minus I1 100 equals zero. So that means I1 is equal to, let's go figure this out, this is 0 0.006 amperes. Ah, yes, but, 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 I1 is I2 plus I3, all right? I3 was this amount, right? So I1 is equal to I2 plus I3, I1 is 0 0.006 is equal to I2, which is what I need, what I need to find, plus I3 is 0 0.003. So that means I2 is also 0 0.003. And now we're done. Take this, plug that into this little piece right there. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, 0 0.003 times R is equal to minus 0 0.9 equals zero. And just with a little bit of math, you can just figure out R is equal to 300 ohms, right? Just divide by, put the 0.9 here, divide by 0 0.03, you get that. All right, and so now we're done. So this R right here is 300 ohms, right? That's how you figure that out. All right, that is it. Uh, good luck on the exam and I'll see you soon.